In this video, I'll show you how to find t critical values for the confidence interval that you need. This video also applies to hypothesis testing with certain levels of alpha. So first, let's go to GeoGebra because we're going to use that to find our critical values. Go to geogebra.org slash classic hashtag probability. There's two tabs on the left, distribution and statistics. We're going to use the distribution tab. And then below the distribution in the middle of the page, there's going to be a drop down box that starts by default with normal, but we're going to click the down arrow and go to student. So that refers to the student's T distribution because we want a T critical value. So the layout of this page is that we see the mean and the standard deviation of this curve up in the upper left corner. Then we'll see this bell-shaped curve in the middle of the page with some shading already put to it. And then the mean of this distribution, the t-distribution, is zero. And then we have tick marks going off to the left and right. So it's the student's t-distribution. And in this particular graph, there are 10 degrees of freedom. So that's just the default. And then there are the three boxes where you can choose to have your area shaded to the left, the middle, or the right. And then our probability statement, where we can put in two endpoints to find the area between. And then in the lower right gray box, we're going to see the area between those two endpoints. So I have some questions set up for us. Find the T critical value for a 95% confidence interval, where N equals 23. So we have the two facts right here. We have the confidence level of our interval, and then we have the sample size. So the way the T distribution works is that we need to work with degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is simply n minus 1. So take your sample size, subtract 1. So our, for our first example, we had 23 in our sample size, so 22 are the degrees of freedom. This is important because it changes the shape of our graph. So let's say that I took that 200, uh, 220 and changed it to 220. You can see just a little bit of change in the tail of this distribution. It's very subtle but it does make a difference in the probability. So notice that the center didn't change. It was right about here in the curve of the tails. It changed a little bit. So that's why sample size is important. So we have 22 degrees of freedom. So the next part says, what was the level of confidence? It's 95%. So that means we put, need to put 95% area in the middle of the distribution. So we could try to move the the arrows, these little triangles, off to the side until we get about 95%. And unfortunately, we are not able to put in 0.95 into that gray box because it doesn't know if we need that 95% area symmetric or not. And for confidence interval, you always need to have 95% area in the middle because we are focusing on a center and then having wiggle room to the left and right of that center in equal amounts. So we can use the left tail or the right tail. I'm going to use the right tail. So right now, I changed to right tail, and there's a large part covered uh, in purple. But we need to tell GeoGebra exactly how much to cover in purple. So go back. I had 95% confidence. That means 95% areas in the middle of our distribution. And then think about what's in the tails. If 95 is in the middle, then there's 5% total in those two tails. Split 5% in half, you get 2.5%. So in the lower right box, we're going to put in 0 0.025. Push Enter. Our degrees of freedom is still 22. Here's our 2.5% that is now shaded purple in the right tail. And our T critical value is 2.0739. So that means that if we go out 2.07 standard deviations above the mean, we will get two and a half percent area in a tail. Now, why didn't I use the left side of the distribution? Well, I would have gotten a negative T value. Just think about symmetry and we were flipping the graph. I don't need a negative T value, even though you still have two, two and a half percent in a tail, but the, mar the confidence interval formula takes care of the negative with its plus minus. So when I find the positive t critical value and I put that into my confidence interval formula, the negative is already into that formula. So we know that there's going to be a left and right 
um, aspect to our confidence interval and the plus minus shows us that. So there we go. Well, we have found the critical value for our first example. Now let's go to the second example. Find a T critical value for 86% confidence interval for N equals 36. So I'm gonna change my degrees of freedom first. So 36 minus one is 35. And I'm still gonna use the right tail area. So back again, that was 86% confidence. So I need to do some math. So one minus 0.86, that leaves us with 0.14, so 14%. And then split that in half because our confidence interval is always centered. We're gonna have equal area in the tails. So 14% divided by two is 7%, and 7% as a decimal is 0 0.00. So that was 100% minus 86% gave us 14%. 14% divided by two is 7%. 7% as a decimal is 0.07. So our critical value for this confidence interval is 1.5101. So go out 1.5-ish standard deviations from the mean, and then you will capture, on either side, you'll capture 86% of the area under that curve. So there you go. We have calculated two T critical values for confidence intervals.